I hope you're all having a great day because we have a very nice and useful video here. The volume of a cone is one third volume of a cylinder. We have to explain that to be the case. Assuming they have the same radius and the same height dimension, the volume of the cone will always be one third that the volume of the cylinder. If you know the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h, you know that. We've established that in a previous video, in derivation video, volume of a cone is 1 over 3 pi r squared h. If you were to look at this right here, it's larger. The cone volume is smaller. If you do the difference of the two, pi r squared h minus pi r squared h over 3, you have a difference over here of 2 over 3 pi r squared h. The volume of a cylinder is 2 over 3 pi r squared h units cube larger than that of a cone. And why is that the case? Well, if you look at everything here with regards to a representation and they should have the same radius and the same height, you can do a radius here along the y-axis. You can have a 0 comma r in terms of a y-intercept. You can do height here along a x dimension because you lay down your cylinder flat or you've put your cone horizontally. There's nothing wrong with doing that. If you connect these two lines, you've drawn a diagonal line. If you rotate this diagonal line in the region below it, all of this right over here, around the x-axis, you end up developing a three-dimensional cone. You have a radius here along the y-axis. You have the height here on the x-axis. When you do a point here, 0 comma r, and you have a h comma 0, you don't have connect them, but you draw a line from this point up to this imaginary vertical line, and now you rotate around the x-axis. This region below the curve, you develop what is called a cylinder. But when you compare the two, this is larger, that's smaller, because if you superimpose this here, you're losing out on all of this extra volume, which is right over here. You just lose out on all of this volume because the cylinder goes horizontally, whereas a cone cuts across in a diagonal and you lose that extra space. If this extra space which you're losing out between a cone from a cylinder and you rotate that region around the x-axis, that extra loss space for the cone with regards to the cylinder should have a volume right over here. Two or three pi r squared h. If you can demonstrate the region of this lost volume to be two or three pi r squared h, we can explain why the volume of a cone is always one third the volume of the cylinder. And the short answer to that question is because this diagonal line, you lose out on this extra space, which would be right over here, all of this extra space, which the horizontal line captures, but the diagonal line loses out on that. If we can show you this volume determination, we'll be good. And that right there is what we will do in the rest of this video. So start here with this xy plane. You have a 0 comma r. Connect these two and make a diagonal line. Determine the equation of this line. You're going to do the slope determination. y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. You'll have a minus r over h. That's your slope. Then you can do the equation of this line. Minus r over hx plus y-intercept which is r. So this equation has been done. Draw a line across and you know this right here is y equals r because it's going through this 0 comma r and you're ending it right over here. So you have a top boundary line which is yt is equal to just r and you have a lower boundary line which is your diagonal line. This right here. If you look at this region and the space and you rotate that on the x-axis you're going to have that difference develop. You have an inner radius, you have an outer radius because if you were to do a cross-sectional slice, you'll have a washer develop. That washer goes through and around the x-axis. You have an inner radius, you have an outer radius. Here's my inner radius, here's my outer radius. In each of these radii are the equations of the line. Your inner radius here is going to be up to this diagonal line, which is this equation, minus rx over h plus r. Your outer radius is just r from x-axis all the way up to that r, that's your outer radius. If you have inner radii, outer radii, then you have inner area and you have outer area and you have to determine that. Outer area is easy. It's always pi r square because the sections are circular. Pi r square. But the inner area requires a little bit of work. It's going to be pi times this radius square, r x over h plus r times minus r x over h plus r pi r square. You have to just multiply this. You'll have a pi, you'll have a r square, x square over h square plus r square and then minus 2 r square x over h. That's your inner area. And let's write it out. Pi, you'll have a r square x square over h square 
plus r square minus 2 r square x over h. But we can erase all of this because you've seen how we've developed all of this for you, the inner and the outer area. We've developed that for you and now we can just erase it because we don't need it anymore. What we need to know now is the formula by which we will integrate. We'll go along the x-axis from 0 up to h. 0 up to h. I've isolated these pi's out. We're going to do the outer area. You know the outer area minus the inner area and then dx. But I'm just going to write these items in. Outer area is just r squared because the pi has been isolated. Inner area is all of this because the pi has been isolated r square x square over a square plus r square minus 2 r square x over h with respect to dx when you open up all of this this will cancel out with that and you'll be left with only this pi and then 0 and h you'll have a minus r square x square over h square plus 2 r square x over h dx that's exactly what you have to integrate when you integrate that properly you get that difference in the volume which we're looking for 2 or 3 pi r squared h you'll get exactly that and I'm going to show it to you I'm just going to erase this over here for continuing out that computation right over here remember everything has started from this x and y axis we've cut across for a cone and we've cut horizontally for a cylinder and then the difference between the two represents the difference between these two right here everything is with regards to x and you know you can have a pi when you do the antiderivative you'll have a minus r square x cube or 3h square plus from here you'll have a 2 r square x square over 2h Upper limit h, lower limit 0. 0 is meaningless, but h is not. Plug in the h in the place of x. Minus r square h cube over 3 h square plus 2 r square h square over 2 h. And start simplifying. I have an h square here and an h cube. I can cancel out the h square entirely and cancel the cube on top. I have a 2 and a 2. The 2's can cancel out because they'll eliminate one another. I have this h and h square. I'll erase the h and I'll erase the square here. And this right here is over 1. Do a common denominator 3. You have a pi. You have a minus r square h plus 3 r square h. Do the difference here in the numerator. You'll have a 2 r square h over 3 times a pi. And write everything properly. You'll have a 2 or 3 pi r squared h. And that represents the volume of the difference between the cone and the cylinder. And it explains to you why that volume exists. For a given dimension of a radius and a height, both being the same for a cylinder and the cone, the cone must always be one-third the volume of the cylinder because you lose two-thirds of that volume by this diagonal line going across. You lose it from that diagonal line. And again, this volume represents the volume of the three-dimensional solid that develops from this. This is the region of space which is lost with regards to the cone and the cylinder compared when you rotate them around the x-axis, you develop a solid which looks like that. You see a cylinder outside and then you see this cone cut across. And the, what is left between the two, the difference of the two is right here. In all instances, the cone is always one-third the volume of the cylinder for the same dimension with regards to the radius and the height because of this loss of space which the cone cannot account for. And that loss results from this diagonal line. Everything could have been done with respect to the y-axis and the outcome would be the same. Here we did everything with respect to the x-axis and this diagonal line and the line across shows everything to be true. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye.